Hello everybody, welcome to Life Questions. I'm your host, Bill Harris, and as many of you already know, Life Questions is all about providing you with sound answers to the many questions and concerns that you have about life. And judging by our mail, there are a lot of concerns that you have. Well, after giving these matters careful consideration and some thoughtful prayer, we have assembled a panel of experts to answer your questions. And I'd like you to meet this panel right now, beginning with, first of all, Pastor Nathan Brenham, of Grace Fellowship Church in Lima here, followed by Pastor Jesse Kaler of the Archibald Evangelical Church. And then there's Pastor Chris Ewing of the County Line Church of the Brethren in the Herod area. And lastly, to round up our panel, we have Pastor Ted Bible of St. Mark's United Methodist Church, also of Lima. Gentlemen, we're happy to have you with us. Thank you. Happy to have you back is what we should say. We had a <laughs> very spirited discussion last week. We need to pick up where we left off. And to set the stage for that conversation, we were talking about the fact that despite the fact that parents can raise children in a biblical setting and teaching them what let's say the Lord, in many cases when that child leaves home to go off to college, he or she comes back with a different world view because of the difference in the environment when they go off to college. There are a lot of things that are happening on college campuses these days that did not used to happen. Uh, it's a different world out there. And we were talking about what the church can do to support parents and what the parents can do to uh, be more effective with their own kids. Um, how do you want to pick up on this? Where do you think we're well, to go? Bill, you mentioned that, that times have changed. The battlefield has changed. We see that in the natural as well, warfare, mm -hmm. right? It's not just bullets and bombs now. You have all these different technologies that are coming out. And so I'd say similarly, when it comes to spiritual warfare, we are having to change up our techniques a bit and one of the ways that I think that we could effectively reach our children is simply to know the truth in a, in a greater way than we have before and, and to minister like Jesus did. And one of the ways that Jesus ministered was, was with love, right? Mm. He, 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 wasn't, he wasn't hard bitten, he wasn't short tempered, mm -hmm. he wasn't pressing and prodding, he was just love incarnate. And I think that would be one of the best ways to really, to raise our children and then to release them into society and, and to be there when they need us. You know, um, one of the, the toughest things as a parent for, uh, for my parent style is not to be, uh, you know, too overbearing with my kids mm -hmm. and to just give them some space, give them some liberty. And, and that is the challenge. When, you, when we let them go to college, can we trust God? to touch their lives even in the midst of that morass. Okay. Yeah. I thought about a perspective too. Uh, um, I've heard a lot about it today in age. We, we, we talk about today being a different time and sometimes we think it's a more scary or more dangerous. And I just want to speak a simple truth of saying it's always been hard to raise kids because there's no guarantees because they aren't ours. Uh -huh. They're ours on loan. Yeah. So they yeah. are the Lord's. Yeah. Yeah. So let's say you have a college kid come back and you've done such a good job with them, but he comes back, she comes back, and she's, they start asking questions that you thought you took care of. Mm -hmm. They start coming to some conclusions that you're uncomfortable with. Um, I don't want fear to drive me. I don't want fear to drive me because then I'm not going to parent well. And fear is, oh my gosh, they're lost. No, I, I want this to be a moment where I say, okay, what are they dealing with? And how can I just be faithfully present for them, for what they need? Because my cues, when I think about parenting my kids, how, how do I learn how to do that? Well, I have to consider how God parents me. Because I'm no, I'm no perfect child, <clears throat> child of God. And there are times when I'm stubborn. There are times when I'm complacent. There's times when I succumb to falsehood and truth. And however God parents me, that, that's my guide for how to take care of a kid a college kid, when they come and they start saying, I'm adhering to a different world view. Well, that isn't a time to say, oh, no, oh, no, everything's lost. It's time to say, this is when they're making their own decision. Uh -huh. How can I just be faithful to walk alongside them, to remind them, or actually to pose questions that might help them along? To, what we would say is recognize and adhere to the truth. That's a good mm -hmm. perspective there. What about when they begin to tell you that you're old and foggy and all that, <laughs> all, that, all that belief system that you have in the past is just not with it? You're not up to date? You, you, you need to come up to date and be well, realistic? I, I think that's at the point that I go old school and I say, okay, go have fun with that and see how it works for yeah, you. Yeah. Well, I think you point out, you know, that 
there is nothing really new under the sun and the things that they are actually swinging to that's all old too like none of these are new ideas they're just ideas that they are fresh to, to them well technology yeah, is, is a whole different issue i mean what you're ta looking at is more of cultural and social issues and so as we can see i mean again scripture speaks to everything that they're dealing with mm -hmm. paul deals with it in corinth and and you know everywhere else that he ministered all these same issues so i think you know like we've addressed the issue from from the parent but you know what you've asked also is is what about the church so right now, like there's eight out of 10 already attending teenagers that graduate, stop attending church. Not that they walk away from the faith, but they stop attending church. So that's two out of 10 that stay in the church. Mm -hmm. So how do you address the issue of those kids, those eight leaving the church? Um, so I think as parents, like it's important to have our kids not only connected to us, but also connected to other believers within a good body of believers that are biblically founded because there are things that my kids are not going to come to me because I am their parent. Yeah. But hopefully yeah. they have a relationship with somebody else in the church that is founded in scripture that they feel comfortable with that I have a relationship with too that we can you know work on this together. Yeah. So I think what we have done in our in in the current generation is really put separations between youth and and the rest of the adults and and all those things. So I would ask the question of how do you in your individual church connect teenagers to the adults and how do you connect the adults to the teenagers in meaningful relationships because there are going to be families out there in cultures where that they don't have a good home structure family they don't have the parents so we're looking at this from a christian already perspective right. what if god's you know you've got a family in there that they just don't care that they're they're coming just because they're coming and going through the motions because they think they're good well we need to be those surrogate parents and grandparents speaking truth in those matters mm -hmm. so for my youth group in my church and what i've challenged our church our, our church this year of saying is is i want us to love on those teenagers like nothing else and when they go off to to college i want to have a, a a connection with them so whether we're reaching out with with birthday cards or christmas cards or care packages anything just to stay connected because if they come back and, and live in the area we want them to come back in and be connected to us you know the the, the situation has become so challenging that they are now erupting organizations that are designed to help parents mm -hmm. with scripture <clears throat> to be able to arm that child before they get on the college campus so that they will maintain their faith. Yes. I mean, that's how crucial it has become, hasn't it? Yeah, I, I think, you know, again, it's just, it's just difficult. I mean, there's so many, there's so many um, distractions. Even at the high school age, you know, kids go out, they want to get a job. You want them to get exposed to that. Well, when are they working? When are they working Sunday mornings? You know, when we used to have them come mm -hmm. to church, you know? And so already they're beginning to kind of distance it. And then they go to college, they go, they go away to college. Well, they may or may not get involved in campus ministries at that school, assuming that they have it. You know, some may or may not have it or, or, or have it you know, to the, you know, an actual chapel on campus. Well, is the child then gonna feel comfortable also then is going into a church in, the, in that town? You know, and are they gonna go by themselves or do you wanna drag somebody with them? Yeah. You know, so it's all these kind of new things that they need to begin experimenting with. In, in, in ch being challenged with. And then what kind of church are they going to show up at, you know? So it's just all kinds of dynamics with that. And then sometimes I just may think, you know, it's just easier just to sleep in. <laughs> <laughs> I love the principle, the biblical principle, train up a child. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because let's just be clear, um, we are all control freaks. Yeah. yeah. And there's no guarantees with parenting. That, that's yeah. such a harsh reality. Yes, but it is. If we can parent with that in mind, I'm just here to train them in God's ways. Um, then, then we're able to, to deal better with, even if we are disappointed with how our child is acting. Gosh, shouldn't we respond in grace, even if they aren't spitting out the answers that we train them to have? Why is it so detrimental when, when our, fir our first thought, I fear, is that when our kids start speaking something that isn't quite in line with what we have taught them, we, what happens? We get disappointed and we get mad and we get discouraged, and then we become selfish, and we think, oh, we must have failed. This ain't about me. This is not about me. This is about what Jesus is doing in my child's life. At, at four months old, my role is caregiver. When they're, I don't know, two, two to six, I'm the cop. I'm enforcing rules, and there's a lot of foundation that's poured in there. Mm -hmm. But then there's this weird phase we call coaching, 
where the kid has to learn and glean some responsibility of their own, feel significant consequences under the safety net of living in my home. But then there's this consultant phase where they do go off on their own, and I'm probably not going to hear from them unless they reach out to me. Isn't that how God deals with us? In phases and in seasons? And I, I want to take my cues from Him to save myself a lot of unnecessary worry, because if there's anything we do as parents about our kids, we worry. Well, it just, it just reminds me of, of just how patient and loving God is. Because so as, is. So is. <laughs> because as we become frustrated and concerned and challenged with the decisions that our children make, God feels the same way he about does. us. And he has for thousands upon thousands of years. Amen. You know, and we got this book that talks all about the frustrations that he had with his people mm -hmm. and how he continues to pursue them ongoing, you know, trying to draw them back, bring them back, to send people on, you know, to, to, to cut them off at the pass, so to speak, you know, to, 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 to make a change and to bring them back. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. but, you, but, you, but you're really based on that foundation. You've, mm -hmm. If you've built the foundation strong and you pray, you know, you pray to God that they will, in fact, come back, you know. Mm -hmm. Now, when? Well, and I That's think the it's, big question. God yeah, wondered that too. Sure. When they coming back? When they coming back? <laughs> but let's look at this generation. You know, this generation as a whole, they like to look at experiences. They want they want to experience life. And I think uh, you know, as parents and as as a church, we have kind of lost that, and and we've tried to protect our kids and tell them. And and but really, we need to really what you're saying and what you're is is guide them to have their own experience own encounter with Jesus Christ because if you have your own legit experience with Jesus Christ you're not walking away and if you do it's a hard walk away yeah so I mean that's the role of a parent and that's the role of a church is to take our body of believers to experience who God is so that they know that they know that they know what the truth is I love that I heard recently the quote you probably heard it too God has no grandchildren <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yes. Right? Yeah. God is, they're only children. Yeah, only sure. children who've experienced his, his fatherly love. Yeah. 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 You know, I, I mentioned earlier that there are um, organizations out there to support parents and helping them to prepare their children for college. One is called the Summit Ministry. Mm -hmm. uh, a second one, by the way, is called the Worldview Academy. And they actually exist, as I said, to support the parents in this area. I, but I want to bring another thing here. There are churches that have ministries on college campuses mm -hmm. to help offset some of the worldview that our children are being exposed to that have no godly principles to them. I know that the church that I attend has one. And they're very present on the college campuses where they are allowed to uh, share the gospel in whichever shape, form, or fashion that has been agreed to. What well, do you think about that approach? There's also a, a movement, Stand for Truth, is trying to <coughs> start, um, I think it's called uh, is it Lifeway Academy or something like that, where they actually have, um, it's, it's a release time program for high school and, and elementary. So there are even programs that are trying to start um, these opportunities to teach kids about scripture and the, and the foundation. So there are a lot of different opportunities. Bluffton has one, I think it's one of the oldest release time programs in the, uh, in the state. And I, I hear the Salina starting one. Salina, mm -hmm. I heard starting one, uh, Van Wert has one. Um, and, and I think, you know, the Pandora locally is trying to start one. So, and I think there's up, mm -hmm. some up by Toledo. Um, so like those are opportunities. If you, if you got young kids in schools, you can pursue those things um, and maybe get those in your school district if they're not already there. You can get the churches involved. So um, Campus Life um, is, is great for high school students locally, Teens for Christ here in Lima. Um, you also have Campus Crusades for the college campuses. All fantastic programs that your kids can get involved. All right, Brian, we're going to need to take a break, but I think it's good to see that we are doing something uh, rather than sitting back saying, my, ain't that a shame. We, we need to be doing something. Yes. We're going to take a break and we'll be back to deal with another subject of your interest right after this. Don't go away. There's still a lot more discussion to come on this episode of Life Questions. But first, do you have a question for a future show? Email it to lifequestions at WTLW.com or call us 419-339-4444. 
You can also suggest pastures you feel would be a good fit for our panel. Again, send your question ideas and pasture suggestions to lifequestions at WTLW.com. Now back to the discussion. All right, we're back and of course we were just talking about young people and uh, how we train them and give them all we've got and then send them off to college. And a lot of times they come back home as a, a different animal altogether with different, uh, w different world views and the like. Now let's turn our attention to the missions field because here's, here's an idea that many churches have picked up on that it's good to send young people away on these foreign mission trips to see how others live around the world, which is not nowhere near like what they get in the United States, of course, and uh, see if that really helps them. What do you think about the missions field for that? Now, Pastor, you just f fresh off the missions field. You came here to tape this show just getting back, what, was yesterday? Uh, Saturday, Saturday night, Saturday yeah, a couple night? days ago. Yeah, yeah. yeah, how about it? Where were you, by the way? So we, <clears throat> we took a trip to Zimbabwe in Southern Africa and um, short term, 10, 10 day trip, three, two other couples and um, yeah, it speaks to this, you know, mm -hmm. the, the age-old question or debate, short-term mission trips, how valuable are they? That's one of the who, questions. Who are they supposed to be good for, you know, yeah. are they more, more beneficial for the participants who go or the people who you go to serve? And that, that's an that's a age, lifelong debate. But mm -hmm. I'll, so I'll speak and just get the discussion going. Um, I, I really have seen an incredible, well, as a youth pastor, we, we sent um, uh, a group of teenagers mm -hmm. away in, Short-term trips every summer, just part of part of the fabric of the youth ministry, and that continues today in our in our church. In the country or out of the country, um, it, it rotates international and domestic. Yeah, every other country. But one of the benefits that does is, um, and one of our goals is, we want to foster a burden, a heart, for the nations. God, God is after the nations. Mm -hmm. He's after mm -hmm. every human on the planet, mm -hmm. and we know that heaven's going to be made up of every tribe, nation. So, so we know that without that exposure, they may not have a heart for the nation. So it's, it actually supersedes what they're going to go and do. You know, they're going to go and do some things, but in reality, I just want to cultivate a heart like God's for the nations and to see them fulfill the Great Commission. Go, go and make disciples, right, of mm -hmm. every nation. So that's the starting point. What do you guys think? Who's going to jump in? Well, I'll say that there will be some watchers, inevitably, that will say, why do we need foreign missions? We have enough need right here in Lima, Ohio, in, mm -hmm. in this state. And, and I would say that, that while there's certainly a need, um, when I was doing home missions, that was where I began full-time ministry at the Lima Rescue Mission. So I saw the need firsthand for ten, approximately 10 years. And I kind of had that thinking that, man, we've got huge needs right here at home. Why send people until I went to a foreign country? Until ah. I took my first missions trip. Where'd you go? Internationally. I went to India in 2014, India. 2015. Yeah. And, and I want to tell you that, that the, the poorest person here is so far ahead <laughs> of some of the, the middle class people in these foreign countries. The need there is so great. We have, we have spiritual hospitals on every corner. We have 153 approximately churches in Lima, Ohio. How many? 100, 153 just in Lima. Wow. And, and you go to these places, it's so spiritually desolate. And, and I think people have that mindset until they go. Yeah. Until yeah. they see the desperate need of people that are dying, they're going to hell and they have nothing. So. I, I hope that for those that would watch this and say, well, I don't, you know, I, I, care, I care about the need here in, in my little neck of the woods. Do that. Mm -hmm. You can do, it's both and, it's not either mm -hmm. or. Yeah. But I think once you go, you'll see that there's a need. Part of the debate is that some churches in their budget, they have a greater budget for the foreign mm -hmm. missions and nothing going on for what's happening in their own backyard. You know, there, there's somebody could be starving in their backyard and they're totally ignoring that because they're sending all the money overseas. Then you've got the reverse of that where you have those churches that yeah. only focus in America, yeah. don't even have a clue what's going on over across the pond anywhere. Well, so I think it's how important do you, you to balance understand, that? you know, from the body aspect, okay, God creates us all with different giftings and talents and calls. And some of us are called to minister to those far away 
those are called to local, just like we have been called to pastor. Mm -hmm. Not everybody's called to pastor, right? So when you look at the Acts 1-8, you know, you will be my witnesses on uh, Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Like those are just, if you look at Jerusalem was the city, mm -hmm. Judea is an area, Samaria was a city and mm -hmm. an area, and mm -hmm. then ends of the earth. So, you know, what I always try and do is, is you know, as, a, as our church, we should have a concept of, of ministry of all of all levels, because I understand that there are people in, inside my church that are called not only to minister th to those locally, but God has gifted them and called them to witness to other people on a global aspect. Sure, sure. So we're not there as, a, as our church yet, but that's our heart's desire. And I mean, I had the same thing. Like we just um, in September, we took two miles from our church and we were blessed for, from Procter & Gamble um, with roughly $15,000 worth of product to give away. And so we hit every house that we could in two miles from the church. And we had people look at us and say, well, I'm not sure why you're giving all this product away when there's people inside the church that need it. Well, because God told us to, and God called us to, mm -hmm. because we were called to love them. And we were, I told my congregation, we are not to invite them to church. We are just simply to love on them and say, we, we want to bless you and we want to pray with you. And so what can we pray with mm -hmm. you for? Mm -hmm. And to be there with those people. And that's what missions is. And missions will change your life. I think something mm -hmm. really unique about this, that the dynamic is that we are complicated beings and we have been given a calling by God that isn't narrow, it's broad. So think of the, the great commandment, love God, love your neighbor as yourself. Mm -hmm. So do we love God a third of the time and then we love our neighbor? The, there's nothing about balance. He calls us to multiple callings and he asks us to be faithful to all of them. So, yeah. so on a church level, I, I, that's a great fabric or a grid for us. We have to be faithful to our Jerusalem, Judea and Samaria, and the ends of the earth. We can't just be ends mm -hmm. of the earth, or we yeah. can't just be... We have yeah. to be faithful to multiple callings at the same time. And that, that frees us because we can't do that without the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Acts 1-8. Yep. Well, God always I'll gives us I'll send you the Holy like Spirit, that. and He will empower yeah. you. Yeah. You know, He'll yeah. empower yeah. you. So he, he always challenges us beyond oh. our, our normal physical capacity, does He not? So that we have to rely on His Spirit. Well, that's one of the things that I found in, in when we've gone on short-term mission trips is that one of the things I stress as one of the leaders was, you know, we need to get outside of our comfort zone. Mm -hmm. And when we get outside of our comfort zone, then we begin to rely upon God. We rely on the Holy Spirit to open doors, opportunities for us. And one of the great values, there's multiple values to going on short-term mission trips and going outside the country mm -hmm. or even staying inside the country. Mm -hmm. But one of the values is you begin to experience a different culture you know, a different worship experience, you know, there's language barriers, there's those kinds of things. But, but if you're just, if, if you're just ministering in your own hometown, okay, where do you go, where do you go to sleep at night? Back in your own bed, okay? Um, you, you, you drink the water out of your own faucet again. When you're in a foreign country, we didn't have that experience. We couldn't drink water out of the faucet. We didn't sleep in our own bed. We ate food that was different. We had language barriers. And not only did we begin connecting with people there and understanding their culture, but I connected closer with those who were on my team. We, became, we, we got a bond together that was very different than what we would have normally just back at the church on Sunday or Saturday, worshiping whatever it is we're doing. And we came back, we wanted to be challenged again mm. and see how the Holy Spirit could work again within yeah. us and in our church. Yeah. And then we went out into our neighborhoods and began yeah. worshiping. Mm -hmm and began ministering in those ways. And then we went back again and we took other people the next year on another, you know, mm -hmm. excursion, mission trip yeah. outside the country. And then they got fired up to come back and do it. So it's, there's so many variables, there's so many valuable things that happen when you go away for a short-term mission trip. Mm -hmm. It just changes well, you. One of the things we see in scripture, this is with Jesus, um, and then we see it with Paul is that he has a different strategy for those really close to him compared to those really far from him. He reaches both, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but he, he embraces a different strategy. So when I think short-term mission trip, personally, I want people to go because they'll be changed. Yep, right. But the question always comes up, well, what about those you're going to serve? How much can you actually do? That's a great question. That mm -hmm. should guide our mission. That should guide mm -hmm. our mission endeavors. So we just went to Zimbabwe. <clears throat> we were going to cross into Mozambique. We were detained at the border for nine hours. Goodness. And it seemed wow. that um, 
that you hopefully you understand this, Satan seemed to thwart every plan hmm. along the, the way every single day. My wife got sick, but um, the, the reality was we went there to invest in indigenous leaders who were going to reach unreached people groups in Mozambique. That has become our mantra from Romans 15 when Paul says, mm -hmm. I'm going where the name of Christ has not been known. When I think of the ends of the earth, there are still unreached people groups who yeah. do not know yes. Jesus. Yes. Right. That's right. my strategy over there. And I can't be there every day like I am in Archibald. So I'm going to equip and pour into and support and invest indigenous leaders who know the culture, who know the language far better than me. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to pour in and invest in them and hopefully unleash them to go preach the gospel and, and plant gospel preaching churches. So just so you know, a different strategy for each of these areas is how we are faithful. And that's, that's probably very practical and hopefully helpful. So even if someone doesn't feel called to go to Africa, great empower someone else to go then. Yes. Still engage yeah. in the ends of the earth. But I think that's important what you're saying too, because just as you're pouring into them, they, they also need encouragement. I do. Yes. You know, they need support, they need encouragement. They need to know that there are people praying for them back here. Yes. Yeah. You know, and yes. encouraging them, sending them notes, whatever yeah. the case may be, you know, that they are, it's just not a one and done, because you'll go back, you're going to find right. some other way you're to right. connect with them, continue to encourage them, support them in their work. You're Which right. you're pointing to, you're right missions is bigger than just those that go, oh, which yeah. nobody ever really addresses. Like there's all the support from even the local church of sending that team. And uh, like you said, the prayers and just the logistics and, and all those kind of things. So missions is just so much more than just going. But to connect this back to the, to the youth, mm -hmm. if what I have challenged youth, and that was great that you guys have that in your youth program, <coughs> is you will learn more about yourself and who God created you to be on a two-week mission trip than you will four years of college, hands down. <laughs> yeah, I have to say that missions yeah. is fast-track transformation. Yes. Yeah. Just, you've all been expressing that. I just took my family uh, to Haiti back in December, kind of before all the, the manifestations politically, et cetera. And, and I want to tell you, so my oldest is 16, my youngest is 13, and, and they were they were just in awe that God had totally touched their lives. They didn't want to come back. And I mean, this is mm. one of the, the poorest nations, if not the poorest uh, in the Western hemisphere. And, and so mission, foreign missions, yes. Local missions, yes. You do, you do both and. We can, we can walk yes. and chew gum at the same time. Do you take, <laughs> do, yeah, yeah. Do, do you walk or do you, do you take kids on mission trips? Yeah. I. I Absolutely. I think that's how you translate the Great Commission, right? Matthew 20, mm -hmm. 19. That, that phrase at the beginning uh, it isn't just a go. It's, it's as you go, as you are on your way. So, so the concept of mission isn't just a separate category where now I'm on mission, now I'm not. It's as you go, this is what we do. Got to end it there. End it there. Thank you very much. Great contributions. And uh, you all put me to shame. My longest mission trip was two weeks <laughs> in uh, Nairobi, Kenya. <laughs> well, we uh, certainly appreciate uh, these fine gentlemen and what they have to share with us today. And uh, we'll be back again, of course, next week with a brand new panel. So make sure that you stay tuned. And until then, may God bless you. Bye-bye. You've been watching TV44's newest locally produced program, Life Questions. Now we'd like your feedback. What did you enjoy about this show and what would you like to see more? Perhaps you have your own questions you'd like us to pose to our panel of pastors in a future show. Submit your questions now by email to lifequestions at wtlw.com or call us with your thoughts. We're able to discuss relevant topics with local pastors right here in the TV44 studio thanks to your financial support. Now is an excellent time to make a one-time gift to TV44 or consider becoming a monthly donor. 100% of your donation stays right here at TV44 and is used to spread the family-friendly, life-changing message of Jesus Christ. Secure donations can be made online at WTLW.com, by phone, by mail, or in person. Again, share your questions for consideration for future shows or just contact us with your comments at lifequestions at WTLW.com.